And now let's get to speciation. Yes, and this is our first topic for the day. When we talk about speciation, we are talking about the formation of a new species. And this is at ecological, reproductive and genetic level. Now, if you think back about what Colin has just said about species and, and populations, it is about being able to interbreed and having more or less the same characteristics. Now, if reproductive and genetic levels change, that interbreeding will not be possible anymore. And that is why, per definition, when a new species is formed or when reproduction isn't possible anymore, you will have a new species. So, um, let's see. Yeah, the question is, when does speciation occur? Now, a new species will develop when there will be no more gene flow. So the question is, what is gene flow? It's the movement of genes from one population to another. In other words, when individuals from different populations interbreed, remember population is still the same species, but when they interbreed, then we have a flow of genes. Yeah, and okay? even, even if they get together from two different regions, but they get together they can and they can interbreed. But when there's no gene flow, that means there are two different populations and they can't interbreed. Or different species. Yes. Yeah, or different, different species. Different species, yes. rather, yes. Right. But... What brings about speciation? And we look at reproductive isolating mechanisms, a long word, and in short, we call it RIMs, but you must first write out the name reproductive isolating mechanisms. And these are the things that prevent interbreeding. What is it? What are those barriers that cause um, the prevention of the gene flow? Now, Lorraine, yeah, we think, get two types, yeah. yeah. And, and when we talk about the two types, it will be, as we see on the slide, pre-zygotic. And we're also going to talk about post-zygotic. Now, any remember, a zygote is the result of fertilization. When a sperm cell fuses with an egg cell, the result is a zygote. So pre-zygotic will, in reality, then be anything before fertilization. Anything that stops two individuals from mating, that is still before fertilization. Post-zygotic mechanisms will then be after fertilization, things that happen then. And uh, one of the important uh -huh. pre-zygotic isolating mechanisms is simply that species may have different activity patterns. The one um, type of butterfly or moth, for instance, might uh, be active at a certain time. The other one, one nocturnal, the other diurnal. Um, and this example that you see on the board, you've got two species where the breeding seasons won't overlap. The one might like slightly warmer weather, the other one might like slightly colder weather. Yes, and I see as the messages come in, everybody says, oh, please slow down, slow down. Unfortunately, we have so much that we would want to cover with you that when you do get and receive these DVDs, you can watch it over and over again. So be uh, aware of it that you can mm. go back and listen and watch this over and over You've again. You've got this information in yeah. your textbooks. Rather pay attention and focus and just write down keywords. Don't try to write down all the sentences. Write down keywords so that you can go back. Now, there are more um, prezygotic isolating mechanisms. The one that you have spoken about is behavioral, and um, there are other behavior as well. And if you look at certain um, animals, and, and especially in the animal kingdom, and you do get it in plants as well, but if you look at this, there are certain calls that birds make that attract one another. That's a behavioral mechanism. Structural. Um, they must species. They must be compatible, the genitals, and they must be able to copulate. And then, of course, gamete mortality, if it is as such that the sperm cell will never reach the egg, then no zygote will be formed. So these are all pre-zygotic isolating mechanisms that prevent fertilization. In other words, um, certain behaviors in animals, certain structures that they don't have, that's might also be true for plants. Um, I've written the word pheromones there. Those are the smells 
and and the uh, that and, and it's a type of sexual stimulus that animals give off. And if I don't like your pheromones, then uh, nothing will happen. Mm. Uh, and uh, as Colin said, can meet mortality. Sometimes, and, and you also find that in plants, where the way, the pathway mm -hmm. that the male t pollen tube must travel or must grow is simply too long. And it will stop growing before it's reached mm -hmm. the egg cell, simply because the two species are not compatible. And uh, in other words, all of these, long before this, even we, one can even think of fertilization. Yeah, and yeah. if we think also of gamete mortality, think about it that sometimes, or fish, for instance, they lay their eggs in the water, the sperm cells are in the water. What is the possibility that some of those sperm cells might never even reach the eggs? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right, let's go to post-zygotic um, mechanisms. And here we have, and, and I think you can also, we can look at that. There mm. we have a zebra, and we have here a, a zebra and donkey. A donkey. And um, look at the diploid number of the somatic cells of the zebra is 44, and that of the donkey is 62. And what you see here is the result of this fertilization. So fertilization has taken place, that is why it's post-zygotic. And here we have a little zebronchi, a combination oh, of a shame. zebra and a donkey. So pretty. And if you I can must show them write something, yeah. yeah. Well, before we get there, maybe we can just tell them why is it then that this um, post is post zygotic, but these the offspring, this zebronchi that you see there, is infertile. It's sterile. Okay. Can we have the paper? Thank you. There you've got the zebra was the male, the donkey the female. The zebra has 44 chromosomes, the donkey 62. Now, during meiosis, we will find that the gametes of the zebra will have 22 chromosomes. The gametes of a donkey will then have 31, 31 and 31. If those two, for instance, it could have been these two or those two, but let's say these two fused, sperm cell, egg cell, you will have a zygote with 53. Now, if this individual, which is the little zebronchi, if the little zebronchi wants to reproduce now, how are we going to form gametes? Hmm. We don't have an even number. Are we going to have 26 and 27? It's not going to work. Homologous pairs can't form. Um, crossing over can't form. There are certain chromosomes without the proper number of genes or, or certain characteristics and that is why you will not have fertile offspring and this was a question last year where the matrix had to explain mm -hmm. and obviously you're not going to get the identical question but you might get a similar one or the principle and um, this is in other words where hybrids are sterile for instance mules zebronchis we get the liger the lion and the tiger there are other, other examples as well.